Hey, hey. Today's video is going to be about hardware and gear. And I get a lot of questions about computers specifically and if upgrading certain components and certain things will actually make a difference in your music production. So I'm gonna dispel some myths and give you guys the straight goods on computer gear when it comes to making your music production platform more powerful. First thing, RAM. In Ableton Live, massively increasing your, your RAM will not make a difference. At least in Ableton Live 8, it is a 32-bit application. Ableton Live 8 on PC can only address up to two gigabytes of RAM or on Mac, three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, if I put 16 gigs of RAM in my machine, is that gonna help me with Ableton Live? No, it's not. But uh, here's where it will help you, is if you're running additional programs in addition to Ableton, or also considering that your operating system is going to take RAM, it will make things more smooth. And just in general operation of your computer, the more RAM you have, the smoother it's gonna be. So although I don't preach um, upgrading your RAM is the first thing, especially considering a lot of computers already come with four gigs of RAM, which is pretty sufficient to run Ableton. Um, my personal machine, I have 16 gigs of RAM in my machine. And that's because I like it to be as quick as possible for doing a variety of different tasks. And I also do video editing with my machine. So for me, it helps to have my, my RAM maxed out. Next thing, processor. Processor is probably the most important thing when it comes to music production. And um, I wanted to speak to exactly how Ableton Live handles multi-core processors. So, you know, with, um, for example, the Intel um, i7, it's a quad-core processor. Technically, it's a single processor, but it's like having four separate processors. How Ableton Live handles that is every time you add an audio or a MIDI track, that track will get its own processing core. And any devices you add in the chain on that track will, will take and consume that core's processing power. So it makes sense that the more cores you have, the better your computer is going to be able to handle multiple audio tracks. Now what happens when you run out of cores is it starts doubling up tracks onto your existing cores. So the more cores you have and the more powerful those cores, the better. In my personal machine, I run an Intel quad core i7. Um, I wish they made uh, multi-processor MacBook Pros, but they don't. Now my main studio computer is a Mac Pro Tower and that has two processors. It's running uh, two Intel quad core Xeon, so it has eight processing cores. Um, next thing we'll talk about is hard drives. Now, hard drives, that's one area where I think it's often overlooked. They think a hard drive's a hard drive. Well, here's the difference. Ableton Live and any other music production platform streams an incredible amount of audio off of your disk. And in computers like laptops that typically have one hard drive, that's putting an incredible amount of pressure on your hard drive. Because not only is your hard drive running um, and spooling information for your operating system, which then goes into your RAM, it's, um, it's running your audio tracks. So any audio information that you have is grabbing information off of your disk and streaming it. So the faster your hard drive, the better it's going to perform. A lot of people that have trouble with Ableton um, are running 5,400 RPM hard drives. You can at least upgrade your hard drive to a 7,200 RPM hard drive, SATA drive. Um, those are going to perform a lot better. But even in more recent days, we've all heard about solid state drives. And solid state drives represent, in my opinion, the, the most significant advancement in the actual processing capability of computers for audio in the last couple of years. Me personally, in my machine, I have a, a solid state drive that's 480 gigs as my main system drive. And it's a, a top end Kingston Hyper X drive that's been designed for audio video. So it's extremely fast. You can click on it, it launches an application like that. But in particular, for Ableton Live, the amount of audio information I stream off my disk, it increases the performance of the computer many, many, many times. Now, solid state drives are very expensive. The drive I put in my computer was about $1,000. They are coming down in price, but if you can afford it, putting in a solid state drive in your computer will be one of the largest advancements you can do as far as its capability of handling audio information. Secondary drives. I think it's very useful for computers to be able to run some data off of a, off of a backup or secondary drive. If you have a tower, that's a lot easier. They have drive bays usually for multiple hard drives. In my Mac Pro Tower, I have four drive bays and they're all filled with drives. And that way, if you're installing large sample libraries like Native Instruments Battery, Native Instruments Contact, uh, BFD, uh, Spectrosonics Trillion, anything like that, then you can put those sample libraries on your extra disk. And that way you have two disks that are simultaneously streaming information rather than putting all of the load for all your samples and audio on one disk. 
on the MacBook Pro specifically, and, and possibly some other app laptops, they have these optical drives, the super drives in them. I don't use DVDs or CDs anymore. I mean, it's just obsolete technology as far as I'm concerned. And there's a piece of kit that you can get called a data doubler. And you can actually use that, remove your optical drive, and you can put in another either solid state or SATA drive into that drive bay. So that's a upgrade that I'm about to do to my system. I'm putting in a, a 750 gig SATA 3 drive in place of my optical drive, which will give me much more storage space, plus the extra performance of having multiple drives on one system in my MacBook Pro. So it's gonna turn my MacBook Pro into a, a very, very powerful um, production platform that will actually replace my need to use my Mac Pro Tower for pretty much all my audio production. Okay, next bit, sound cards. This is a external sound card, it's an Apogee Duet. And yes, computers have built-in sound cards. You can plug your headphones or you can even plug a, a jack in there and run audio directly out of your, your MacBook Pro or your, your laptop or your computer. However, what's happening when you do that is all of those audio calculations that need to happen to convert digital audio to analog are happening on your computer, which puts extra strain on it. And also the audio cards that are built into these machines, even the MacBook Pros, are still not um, the best you can get. So I always use an external sound card. So the Duet by Apogee happens to be a very high-end card with very nice converters, so I use this for all of my recording and live play. And what this means is that the, the audio processing to convert digital audio to analog audio is happening on the sound card versus taking heat from your computer's processor. So again, a performance upgrade. The last thing I'll talk about are external or um, additional DSP cards, like this card called um, the Quad. Uh, it's a UAD2 Quad by Universal Audio. And they basically are dedicated processors and RAM that will run audio processing suites. There's a variety of these different cards available. Me personally, I happen to really like the UAD platform. Their plug-in quality is second to none, and their cards and their hardware and their drivers are all extremely reliable. So I have two of these UAD cards that are running in PCIe slots on my Mac Pro Tower. And for my MacBook Pro, I run a, um, a Firewire 800 satellite card. And basically what that does is it allows me to run a whole bunch of extra plugins that would normally require massive CPU and RAM on my laptop, but all of that processing is occurring off board on the UAD card. So again, a massive performance upgrade Basically what you're aiming to do with your main production computer is to do as little of the audio processing using its resources and as much using things like sound cards and DSP and stuff like that. Speed up the hard drives. Um, RAM, like I said earlier, is not as important as a lot of people think it is. A lot of these things are better things to invest in first. Now, of course, that game entirely changes when you're dealing with a 64-bit application. A 64-bit application can address way more in the way of RAM, and then the performance upgrades that are available to you by upgrading your RAM are more significant. So there's a quick little rundown of the real deal, the straight goods on hardware, as it relates to your ability to produce music and speeding up your machine. So I hope you guys got some value out of that, and I'll talk to you real soon. Peace. <laughs>